welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining in today. Uh, I hope uh, everyone's doing great. One thing which I wanted to tell you all was that for people who have uh, used our learning platform Quantra before, uh, you guys can kind of fire up that uh, IPython notebook in your browser and uh, you know kind of run it along with this session. Uh, for anyone else who is, uh, you know, uh, getting uh, have not used the Quantra courses before or not used the IPython notebook and that, um, you can just uh, and but know how to use the uh, Jupyter notebook can um, do the same. So, um, and why I ask you to do this is only because uh, we'll be going through some codes when we'll be developing a strategy um, and basically in the strategy strategy ideation phase. And I think that it's going to help you a lot if you practice the code along with me. And um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, if anyone pleases, then please uh, go ahead with that. And uh, so then I, I think now everything is in order. I've told you this and um, we can start. Now, in today's masterclass, uh, which is also the webinar of the 10 years of Quant and Steel series, Liu and I will be focusing on the entire journey of uh, ideating, creating, and implementing an automated trading strategy. Kui Liu uh, is the founder of the Running River Investments LLC, which is a private hedge fund that specializes in the development and implementation of uh, many automated trading strategies. Uh, he is also an, uh, the author of uh, a flexible and very easy to use uh, Python package that uh, interacts with the main interactive broker C++ API called iBridge Pi. However, in this session, um, you will get to know a lot about the application of the API, that is the iBridge Pi API, and about the developments which uh, actually allow the traders uh, to get connected with uh, the leading brokers. Now, I'll keep it as a surprise for many of you who do not know about it because it's a wonderful development by Dr. Liu. Um, and I would not go uh, too much into the depth of uh, uh, this particular API because I know that I wouldn't be doing justice to it. And we are uh, lucky to have the author of the IP API with us. Um, so yeah, now about myself, my name is Aditya Gupta. I'm uh, working with the product and content team at Quant Insti, where I'm focusing on developing various uh, avenues so that we can reach uh, you know, the desired scalability for our products. And um, before joining Quant Insti, I was working in the domain of alternative investments and have also traded the uh, derivatives of fixed income, mainly European fixed income and commodity derivatives for a prop desk. And um, as, as a uh, part of my entire career, I've also briefly been a part of a listed uh, finance company uh, with, the with the team, uh, quantitative research team basically. Um, however, one note which I have uh, about myself is that uh, I'm not uh, particularly from the quant background. I, uh, I am uh, from a non-programming background. However, after seeing the advantages of uh, uh, you know, algorithmic trading and quantitative analysis, um, I basically switched from uh, discretionary trading, which I was doing at the prop desk using technical analysis and started uh, uh, you know, my journey. And uh, so here I am uh, trying to just uh, Kind of, it's it's it might uh, look like a monologue, but I'm just gonna kind of tell you about uh, my journey and you know what I learned, and I think it'll be very very useful for anyone who is also interested in creating uh, automated trading system. Trading by a set of rules would be something which would come under systematic trading. So. Uh, when we are considering um, automated trading, basically what we're trying to do is uh, we are executing the trades uh, using a pre-programmed uh, trading instruction and uh, which allows a trader to completely automate the trading process. Now, when we are thinking about the uh, trading process, we're actually uh, talking about three main things. Now, those are order generation, order placement and order execution. Now, um, this particular picture which you're looking at is just a reference picture which I'm showing so that you know, we'll be going to, we're going to discuss it later uh, in a little bit more depth. But this is just you know, a simple picture where you're getting the data source, you have a little block where you've done your analysis, and after running the data source, your uh, trades are getting executed to the trading platform. Now uh, that we know what automated trading is, and automated trading is basically a synonym for algorithmic trading. So we now can look into the steps involved in algorithmic trading. Now, the three main steps which we look at are uh, research and backtesting, paper trading, and live trading. And it may come off as a surprise to a lot of people. Uh, research and backtesting actually takes 
50% of your time. Uh, and that is because you'll be doing a lot of analysis, you'll be coding your strategy, you'll be back testing, optimizing, there'll be a lot of things involved. So let's go uh, with each step uh, carefully. Now, first step, we do the analysis. Now we have three types of analysis. Uh, First is quantitative analysis, technical analysis, and fundamental analysis. Uh, for technical analysis, basically what we're doing is looking at the historical price charts, identifying various patterns, and then using those patterns to further predict the price. In fundamental analysis, we are basically studying company financial statements like balance sheet, profit and loss statements, cash flow statements, and also analyzing micro and macro economic factors. All of this which is done is to figure out if the stock value or the current stock value is overvalued, undervalued, or fairly valued. And accordingly, we take a position. However, in the in quantitative analysis, what we're trying to do is we're using mathematical models and statistical analysis to analyze the data. So we try not to have any bias. We try not to have any preconceived notion. We are just seeing what the data is trying to tell us. And then using that data, we try to compute a strategy. That strategy is something which uh, will basically define uh, what your uh, buy and sell signals would be and how would it, uh, you know, how basically you'll be carrying that out. Now, imagine, um, so before we start from that, I just want to cover like from a very, uh, you know, kind of a practical point of view, um, a trading strategy is uh, nothing but an algorithm that takes in the data and gives out the series of orders. So it processes it and it tries to understand what the data is telling and then just, uh, you know, gives out the buy and sell signal. And once we have developed that strategy, uh, basically we have uh, kind of not developed, but computed that strategy, we then try to develop it. And in this development phase, we try to use a programming language. So it, it differs, uh, so programming language is something which you might be comfortable with, some people are comfortable with. Some people are comfortable with Python um, and um, According on their preference, they develop the strategy. We also be developing a very simple strategy of uh, moving average crossover uh, in this uh, master class. And I'll show you in a bit how we're going to do that. And after we have developed the strategy, we're going to get into back testing, where is you know basically trying to take historical data, run our strategy on it, and try and understand if that's, if it has performed properly. We're going to do that as well. And after we have done the research and back testing, we move on to the paper trading phase, where we are basically uh, running our strategy using real-time prices, but not risking any um, not risking any capital. So we're basically trying to practice and try to see how our strategy would perform in real-time market. Because during backtesting, we are only using the historical data. So we do not have a lot of idea how it would actually perform in the live markets. And in live trading, we just basically, the one thing that was remaining was um, act, you know, you know, actually earning profits or losing real money. So um, on the basis of that, we're basically now shifting to live trading when we're confident that our strategy has performed well during back testing and paper trading. And then, you know, we basically put it into live markets. Now, one thing that about pay, paper trading is that a lot of people have their uh, understanding of uh, how much they should run their paper trading strategy. Uh, Dr. E.B. Chan actually says that you should run it for at least three months. And he also does it for three months. So um, that is a time that you can take as a benchmark, uh, probably take that as a benchmark time frame. And uh, in order to connect with the live trading bit or the paper trading bit, you would need uh, broker connectivity so because so that you can get the real-time prices and you know kind of send the orders to the exchange in case of live trading. And for that, you need an API. And that is where iBridge Pi actually comes into picture. We'll again, uh, as I said, you know, we'll be dwelling, going more into depth uh, with Dr. Liu uh, to understand how iBridge Pi works. Now, uh, this is basically the strategy spectrum. So, what you're seeing is on the uh, vertical front, you're seeing the uh, types of analysis which are there. And on the horizontal front, you're looking at um, various profit drivers. So uh, for when, when you'd be ideating a strategy, somewhere or the other, your strategy would lie into this um, spectrum, all right? For example, if you just take, uh, you know, something based on event-based, uh, a quant would probably use sentimental analysis. And um, for example, from understanding the sentiment from Twitter, and then 
taking their trades on the base of the news or the sentiments that's coming out from Twitter. Usually a technical trader would not delve into an event uh, based uh, profit driver because they would want to stay out of the market. So that's why you're seeing it's nothing much here. And fundamental also, it's probably going to be discretionary because while they're analyzing the micro and macro economic factors, um, they basically decide on themselves like how the price will uh, impact the particular stock price. So what we basically, and I, I think the best thing uh, you can do right now is take a screenshot of this uh, uh, particular slide. And when you actually ideate your own strategy, you can refer to it to see where your um, strategy is lying. So I hope uh, everyone's taken the screenshot so we can move ahead. Now, um, so we have covered this part. Uh, uh, basically quantitative analysis is uh, using, you know, uh, mathematical uh, models and statistical analysis to basically understand the data and it's used for creating quantitative trading strategies used for quantitative research and particularly it's used for portfolio management now when we are actually carrying out quantitative analysis we're trying to understand historical data with the you know with the help of math and statistics now when we are doing that we try to basically turn that data into insights and that helps us to create the strategies as previously discussed However, uh, compared to other analysis, um, quantitative analysis actually helps us a lot to understand the risk management. And that is why people use it. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful tool to actually see um, or calculate the take profit or stop loss levels to, under, you know, to put across with the strategy. So that is one thing that you know, it um, has a little bit um, of an uptick uh, over uh, any kind of analysis. Now uh, that we have uh, understood the basic structure of how the presentation would be and how uh, what analysis are usually considered, uh, we'll now dive into uh, the strategy creation process. Uh, for this, we'll basically uh, look at this uh, function where I told you that we I've basically created a simple moving average crossover strategy. Now I'll go into brief, uh, do it in brief. Uh, so that you uh, you can take the screenshots for reference. And also uh, I would request you to you know, practice uh, this in your own uh, IPython notebook uh, to see how it's working. So basically what we're doing is we are uh, trying to import all the libraries here, which is pandas, numpy, matplotlib, uh, which we'll be using for plotting, uh, Y finance to getting the data and tabulate for tabulating the um, performance metrics. Now, using the wire finance data, uh, wire finance library, we basically uh, imported Tesla data from 2015. And um, when we basically run this, we get the open, high, low, close, and volume data. Uh, and uh, as I've done the data.tail here, we're getting the last five uh, data points. And uh, here's the plot of the price of Tesla. Now, in this um, section where what we're basically doing is that we are calculating the simple uh, short-term moving average and a long-term moving average. And I've given the uh, number of days for short-term moving average is 126, that is six months of trading days and 252 as the entire year. And uh, on the basis of that, basically what I'm trying to do next is giving it a signal. So one means buy minus one means sell. So one means buy because STMA, that is short-term moving average is going above the long-term moving average. And minus one as sell because whenever the short term moving average is going below. So it's a continuous uh, trading process then. And uh, in order to understand how the strategy is performing, uh, what we'll do is we'll calculate the stock return. So stock return is a simple percentage change on the closing prices. And the strategy return is basically multiplying the stock return with these signals. So for an example, imagine you took a buy trade and the market goes down by say 1%. So your buy would be one and your uh, performance would be minus one into one, so minus 1%. And if you take a short trade, say minus one, and the market goes down, then it's minus 1% into minus one, so you can make 1%. So that is how we basically uh, take it uh, as strategy return. And just to see if everything's working well and we're getting right data, we run this, and uh, we see that it's working. Uh, I'm sorry, my internet might be a little bit slow. So just to, okay, I have, yeah, so this is how basically it'll look. Um, so open high, low close, STMA, LTMA, signal, and stock returns and strategy return. Now, uh, basically what we're trying to do is we are trying to plot the entire strategy return 
and we see this chart uh, which is getting computed, which is the data which we'll be getting in this particular column, uh, in this particular column in the data set. And this is uh, basically how the strategy is performed over the years. Now, after this, we basically try to look into different performance metrics. So we are calculating this sharp ratio. Uh, we're calculating CAGR. These are simple uh, formula for sharp ratio, which you calculate over the data. Uh, the CAGR, just trying to understand what's the compound annual growth rate has been, the maximum drawdown. And this particular, uh, which you're seeing, is just to see what the, uh, how on the uh, plot it would look like, how the points of maximum drawdown would look like on when we plot it. And as I told you, the library of tabulate, which we use is to compile all the ratios and to see in a tabular form how it looks. So when we do, we actually see that the strategy is not performed so well. Uh, it's a very simple strategy. Obviously, when you will be back testing it and you know, kind of optimizing it, you'll get a better result. Um, obviously, there are a lot of biases also that come into picture when you're back testing. So you have to be very careful. And I'll share with you a few links also, uh, which will help you understand. Um, and you know, you can read to see how to avoid different back, back testing biases and to avoid common mistakes in back testing. Uh, and here we see that the CAGR is 7%, the sharp ratio is 0.04, and the maximum round. So it's a, it's probably a very bad strategy. <laughs> so uh, don't use this. But for practice, I think um, you can go ahead with it. Now, um, well, now that we have done the uh, little bit of strategy creation and understood the backtesting, this, these are the links which I was talking about. I'll be sending it across to you in the chat. Uh, and you can read these uh, articles to understand more about backtesting. So in a nutshell, what we've right now understood is that quant analysis requires mathematics and statistics. You have to have an interest in it because you'll be dealing with a lot of data. In strategy building, you will be looking at programming and coding. Uh, we use Python because Python is one of the easiest languages to learn. Within a few hours, you can get a very good hang on the basics. And it is basically very well. It performs really well as well. So. Uh, that is why the, the optimum choice for choosing a programming language when you're doing strategy building is Python. And for backtesting, as I told you, there were a few ratios, for example, Sortino ratio, Sharp ratio, CAGR, uh, maximum drawdown. To understand all of these things, you basically need a little bit of understanding of finance. So these all things when amalgamated can basically help you create a wonderful automated trading strategy. This was the picture which I was talking about. Basically, we get the data source. So as you remember from Y Finance, we got the data and then we created the, we did the, we assuming that we created the analysis and we had the strategy in place using Python. So basically the data gets fed in, into the uh, analysis, understands it, and then according to that, it sends the signal. So the minus one, plus one, the buy and sell signals gets to the trading platform and gets, uh, you know, executed. However, in this uh, phase, you have to link it to the API, and the API, which we'll discuss in depth, uh, would be iBridge by now. So uh, for paper trading uh, or for live trading, we'll try to understand uh, from Dr. Hui Liu uh, how basically um, Dr. Uh, iBridge by works and what are the recent and uh, brand new features it has. So uh, over to you, Dr. Hui Liu. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, for uh, introduction, and uh, my name is uh, Hui Liu. And I got my PhD from University of Virginia in United States, and I have a MBA degree from University of Indiana, Uni uh, United States. Uh, right now, I live in San Jose, California, United States. Maybe the city is not familiar with you, but uh, Silicon Valley is the another name for this city. My email is ibreedpi at gmail.com and uh, ibreedpi.com is the website. You can get uh, the ibreedpi package actually. So, and uh, for today's uh, session, I'm going to talk about the algorithm trading with TD Ameritrade, interactive brokers using Python actually. And next. Here is the content for my talk. First, I'm going to have a very brief introduction about algorithm trading, actually um, very brief. Then after you have a great strategy, you need to get connected to a broker to execute your trade, actually. So I give a brief introduction about the TD Ameritrade because uh, it offers zero commission trading. And I'll 
briefly talk about Interactive Brokers, which is the uh, leading company in the algo trading uh, brokers, actually. There's a lot of advantage, especially their API technology. Then I will spend most of my time to talk about Ibridge Pi, which is a Python algo trading platform. First, I will tell Ibridge Pi is very easy to download and unzip. It's just a zip file. And then I will talk about three cornerstones. First is the show real time price, then get historical data. Third one is place orders. I will give you a live demo because right now US market is open so that we can see the, the order are placed and how we get real time prices. The reason I call them three cornerstones because using these three cornerstones, you can build pretty complicated strategies. Uh, for example, we can build a uh, moving average as uh, Aditya uh, talk about in the, 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 in the session. And then I will give you three uh, sample strategies. The first one is rebalance portfolio. The second one is uh, uh, mean reverse strategy. I call it buy low and sell high strategy. The third one will be a uh, catch the trend strategy, which is a uh, moving average crossover. Actually, you just learn the basic idea about moving average crossover. Now it's time to learn how to make it happen in a uh, live market. That's very important. Then I will very briefly talk about backtesting using average pie because average pie support backtesting and live trade in one platform, you can very easily switch them. Then I will give a brief summary. So algo trading, we just talk about algo trading, which is a method to execute orders using automated pre-programmed trading instructions to send out orders. I'd like to briefly talk about the benefits about algo trading. The first thing I would, would like to say is if you get into get used to algo trading, it will be much less pressure because you don't need to constantly watching the market like in this picture. You are facing eight screens and tens of charts and a lot of information. Trust me, it's a lot of pressure for the trader when they facing these screens, actually. If you switch to algo trading, a lot of things, or most of things, or all of things can be done by a program. So you can enjoy your time. Also, when you're doing algo trading, it will definitely less human errors. I will give you an example. One time, uh, when I tried to buy some stocks, but actually, I'm, I was using my cell phone and accidentally I put a minus sign in front of the share of numbers, number of shares, and I click submit. Then the final result is I just short sell a stock. That's not what I want. But think about if you switch to algo trading and the program will do what exactly you told it to do. So less human errors. Also, more free time because less manual works. So that's the benefit of algo trading. And then I want to talk about what do you need to do algo trading. Think about facing a lot of screens instead of you just sit there and watch your robot is doing what you want it to do. So the first thing you need to do is you need to have a broker to do algo trading. And then uh, just like 90% uh, of your time, maybe you are doing uh, research on strategies. So that's very important. After that, if you want to do algo trading, you need to translate your strategies into Python code. However, I, my suggestion to, to, to traders is don't spend your time on coding, but spend your time 
on looking for good strategies. How can we reach that? Use a trading platform like iBridgePy because iBridgePy has taken care of most of the coding problems for you so that traders just focus on trading instead of on, instead of on coding part. Then after you have a, a Python program and you need a desktop, or if you want, you can have a cloud machine and then deploy the iBridgePy into either the desktop or cloud machine and let it run. It can run continuously weeks, months, even years. So the trading platform to execute, to execute code, that's what iBridgePy came in. Internet, definitely you need to get connected to broker's computer, to your computer, then you need a uh, internet. So let's quickly talk about uh, brokers. TD Ameritrade, I call it TD, is US-based brokerage firm. And it offers electronic trading platform, which means you can use API to trade. And this is their website. And the catching thing from TD Ameritrade is their zero commission trading. So think about every time you need to pay a little bit of fee for commission, and right now you can save it. And Average Pi supports algo trading with TD Ameritrade already. Next one I'm going to talk about is interactive brokers. Um, I would say, interactive, based on my personal research, interactive brokers provide the best API solution in the industry. If you want to know more about interactive broker, you can go to their website and click Why IBKR. And uh, I would like to talk about a little bit about the lowest cost. I won't say it's the lowest cost, but their pricing structure is very competitive depending on what kind of contracts you are interested in. And then their API technology, premier technology, I think that's the most important thing for interactive brokers. Think about the, most of the uh, small and the medium hydro funds in, in Wall Street are using interactive broker for, to automate their trading actually. And average price supports algo trading with interactive brokers. Robinhood is another US-based brokerage and it gained a lot of popularity because they focused on using cell phone to do trading. That's just shown in this picture. And I want to say average price also supports algo trading with Robinhood and Robinhood claim it's also commission free. So it's pretty good broker as well. Then after talk about the broker, then we talk about Python platform. Average Pi is a Python pl trading platform. The reason I call it platform because Average Pi has taken care of most of the coding parts for you so that traders just can set up a trading algorithm on their computer or virtual computer in a cloud just very quickly. In the following, I will give you an example uh, of how simple the strategy can be when you are using iBridgePy. Advantages of iBridgePy, the first and the most important advantage of iBridgePy is to protect, protect traders' intellect, intellectual properties, which means you install iBridgePy in your computer, not third party online platform and you can have full control of your code your source code everything you don't need to disclose to anyone that you don't want compared to online platform you need to upload your code to their website and then they will handle everything for you which means you need to disclose your strategies and average path that's the top reason to using average pie. Then average pie support a backtest and a live trading together. So you can easily backtest and live trade. Pretty much no change on your code. You just change the command a little bit. Also, average pie can use any any Python packages 
For example, you can use AI or machine learning packages, whatever you want. Average price supports to trade with different brokers, and also it can manage multiple accounts, which is a big feature for hedge fund managers. Think about they need to handle multiple accounts at the same time. It definitely they need a good tool to help to manage multiple accounts. If you have heard of Contopian, Contopian is the, the actually the pioneer Python algo trading company, and Hybrid Pie supports Contopian algorithms so that you can research on Contopian and then just simply copy paste to Hybrid Pie and Hybrid Pie can run it with minimum changes. Okay, then set up Hybrid Pie is very simple. You just visit this website, hybridpie.com slash download, and then look for the correct link for you because average price support mac windows or ubuntu linux also average price supports python 2.7 3.7 3.8 and if in the future 3.9 or 4 something average file will support swiftly actually so you need to download the correct average file version because it you need to know your system then if you don't have account just create account otherwise just log in download it and unzip that's it very simple no setup okay then it's a time to give a quick demo on average pie after you let's switch to the uh actually i'm using anaconda because i'm using windows and this is the spider ide come with anaconda python and it's very easy to use so i organize the windows like the left part is editor the right hand side is the file so that you know where your files are and the lower right part is the ipython console so you can easily see the result after you unzipped average pie it's just actually this is the folder average pie and so look for a file called wrongme.py but for my demonstration i created a wrongme underscore demo.py and i open it here so let's use Interactive broker as a demonstration. So what you need to do just quickly set up or uh, use the TWS, which is the interactive brokers trading platform. The setup in interactive broker is very simple. You just need to go to uh, settings and then go to config. I won't show it here. What you need to do is go to YouTube and go to actually go to this link or go to youtube just search average pie and then click subscribe there are a lot of tutorials and you will you will find tutorials about how to set up interactive brokers it's very very simple actually just simple simply change the port number that's good enough and then it's time to talk about average by itself. The runme.py is the main entrance of the whole package. And it just needs two changes. The first one is you need to know your account code. This is not the IB login, this is the account code. In the YouTube tutorial, you will find out how to look for the account actually. This is the account number that I'm using. You just copy this account code to average back. And then you need to decide which strategy you want to run. Here I listed five example strategies, but I just want to run one of it. So I use hash sign to comment out these four lines and just 
comment in this line, which means I want to run this strategy, for example. Okay, so it's time to talk about. So the first, you need to change your account code and choose an example. Let's just simply run an example, which is show my account. So I switch the file. This is example show position. And then let's run it. Yeah, that's it. So you can see I'm using this account cash value, portfolio value, because I don't have any position. So position value is zero. If there is positions, if there are positions, it will show up in this session. If there are pending orders, it will they will show up in this session, but there's nothing right now. And this is show show positions. And then, oh, actually, I want to quickly give you a feeling about how easy to show account in average pack, which is go to. Let's open the file, which is example show position. Actually, just one line, display and scroll all, show everything you have seen there. And there are two functions. One is called initialize, the other one is called handle data. I would like to talk about it here. The code structure in average file, there are only one required function, it's called initialize. This is a function to declare global variables for average pi. It runs once at the beginning of average pi, and it's required. That's all you need to do. And actually, even if it's required, you don't need to fill anything. If you don't need to initialize anything, you just put path. Then that's good enough. Then the, the other two functions are very handy. If you want to run something every minute or every second or every hour or every day regularly, then you put whatever you want to do into the function called handle data. If you want to do something at a spot time, for example, I want to do it at 10 a.m. Eastern time every day, you can use a method called schedule function to do it. That's all you need to know, the code structure like this. If you want to know more about how to use AveragePy, then you can go to AveragePy documentation to understand more about how to use different functions because there are too many functions and all of them are well designed and they are flexible and easy to use. That's one of the goals for AveragePy. And then let's because right now, US market is open, it's a great time to give you a, a, a live market demo. Then I want to give you an example to show real-time price. The target is to print ask price of SPY. SPY is an ETF to track SP500 index. This is an ETF, you can think about this, just a stock stock, but actually it is ETF. And what I want to do is I want to print the ask price every second. Think about if without the code, how can you do that? And in average by is very simple. It's like this because initialize, I create a global variable, use the syntax of context dot security. This is the syntax. And I use a function, average pi function called symbol. And SPY is the ticker of the contract. So initialize have a global variable. Then I can use this global variable in the function of handle data here. So this one is the, just the contract SPY. And because handle data, automatically runs every second. So everything I put into this method will be done every second. So 
I used a function called hybrid pie function called show real time price. And I want to the price of SPY and I need ask price. Give it to a variable and print. This is the code structure. And let's switch to the demonstration. For Windows users, you need to restart the kernel every time because I Python console will remember everything you have done before, but that's what we want to know. Well, what, what we want to do in every path. So restart the kernel for Windows user only. And then let's switch to the main entrance, which is the runme.py. Let's switch the code to show real time price. And then let's let's run this code. So I just switch to the second code and then save it and run it. Okay, also I print out the timestamp so that you can see Every second, ask price just changed because the market is open and it's just keep changing. Because in the function of handle data, average price runs every second. That's why the ask price is printed out every second because I put it into the handle data function. This is the demo of show real time price. Then let's switch to the next one is fetch historical data. So when you are doing research, very likely you need to get historical data and calculate technical indicators. Just like the moving average, when you need to calculate, calculate moving average, the first step is to get historical data and then use a Python pandas data frame function calculate moving average so that in average pi you can get historical data using a function called request historical data and the code structure is like this i define a contract in initialize and then i just want to run the code once in handle data to request historical data and print out so that I use a function, average pi function is END, which means after I finish this code, average pi should stop so that handle data function just run once. And the main function to request historical data is called request historical data. It takes three variables. The first one is what contracts you want to ask. The second variable is what kind of bar you need. Here I want daily bar, so I put one day. The third variable is how many bars you want to go back. So this variable is called go back. Here I say I want go back five days, so five D. And the return is a pandas data frame with a timestamp, open, high, low, close, and volume. And then we print it out, use a print. Let's do a real-time demo. Let's switch, go to the main entrance, which is runme.py, and then switch the strategy is example, get, historical data simple. And then let's run it. Okay. As expected, print out the file name, average pi version, value, account account code, and then print out the historical data. The last row of historical data is today. And then END because I want it to stop, just run it once. So it got 
historical data because this one is pandas data frame. So you can do any calculations you want to do using the pandas syntax. The next one is place order. Think about this code. I want to do something like this. I want to place a limit order of 100 shares of SPY at $99.95 as an example. When the ask price is greater than $100.01. So which means when the price go up and then I want to place a buy order, a buy limit order. And then after I place order, the stop. So in average pie, it's very simple. Let me share it. So in initialize, I define two variables. One is called context.security. Defines It defines the contract, which I want to trade. And then I define a variable called context.shares equals to integer 100 which means I want to buy 100 shares of SPY. Then you handle data. Every second, I get the real-time price, which is the ask price. If ask price is greater than $100.01, then I use a average pie function called order, which is place order and I buy SPY, 100 shares, and limit order, which is $99.95. Because I place order, I just want to end there. This is the code. I cannot actually, I, this code will not have immediate effect so that I won't demo this one, but I would like to demo another code which is just simply place order to see how easy to place an order actually. So let's switch to place order. This one is example to place order. As I explained, I want to play SPY, but this time I just want to buy a hundred shares by market price. And then, I want to use another function called order status monitor to follow up on the status. If I see the order is filled, submitted or pre-submitted, then I'm good. Then I want to display all, which means display the account, and then end the, the, the code. This is the code I want to run so that you can see uh, TWS will say, okay, buy 100 shares, something like that. Let me give you a demo. This one is, oh, I didn't put it there. Let me quickly do it. This one is called place order. Call the right name. Yeah, place order. Yes. Yeah. So let's run it. Okay, you see, bought a hundred shares of SPY at this price, and you can clearly see in the account, it print out that I bought a hundred shares of SPY here, and the price cost basis is here. And order status, there, the order ID is IB131. The status is filled, which means it becomes on position and it show up in the position. And this, this action is buy market 100 shares. Time in force is day and the contract is SPY. This is demo of how to place an order in live market. After we have three cornerstones, then we can build algo strategies already. These are the basic steps to build algo strategies. So first you need to think about what kind of contracts do we want to trade? 
So you use hybrid pair function symbol or super symbol to define contract. Then the next question you need to answer is uh, how often do you plan to make trading decisions? Per second, per minute, per hour, or per 10 minutes, something like that. If you do something regularly, regularly then use handle data. If you want to schedule something as you want, then use a function called schedule function. Then the next question is, do you need to calculate technical data, technical indicators? If yes, then you need to use request historical data to request the, to fetch historical data from broker and then using Pandas data frame to calculate it technical indicators. The last step is what kind of order tabs you want to place. As the demo, I use market order and limit order. And if you need, you can still use stop order to place order. So after these questions are answered, then we can talk about strategy. This is a demo strategy. This is something like this. I want to rebalance my portfolio based on my trading instructions every day. Yeah, just rebalance. This is a very popular thing a lot of fund managers would like to do. So in the execution part, I will manually give trading in instructions every day based on my fundamental analysis. For example, I want to buy 30% of my portfolio, if that's PY, 30%, for example, TLT or 40% is GLD, then my instruction to the code, I can use a Python dictionary like this. Oh, there's a typo there. It should be this. And then I want to rebalance at 3.59 Eastern time, which is one minute before US market close. Think about if you want to do it manually, what will you do? Then very likely you need to sit in front of the monitor and then watch your clock until this time and then click, 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 place order, place order, place order. Think about if you are a fund manager, you have a lot of accounts. How will you do it? It's not easy, actually. Definitely not easy. Then we in average pi, then we need these functions. We use symbols to define contract. We use schedule function to schedule something. We use we don't need historical data. And we use market order to execute to for better execution result. Let's take about take a look about the code. It's crazily simple like this. In, initialize. I want to use a function called schedule function to schedule action at 3.59. This is what you need to do. And then the function I really want to run is daily funk, which is scheduled by schedule function. As the trading, trading decision, I put an example here, 30%, 30%, and 40% then place order using a hybrid pair function called order target percentage which will help me to to transverse the percentage into the number of shares i can give you a live demo of how i can rebalance my account so first let's restart the kernel oh before i actually start kernel you know, I have a hundred shares of SPY in my account, but my code will automatically taken care of this 100 shares because I want order target percentage. So let's go to example, rebalance, and then because it's a live trade, you will see what's going on. So bot, SPY bot, XLE, XLK, as instructed, and then boom, the order are placed. It didn't show up because I didn't 
print anything there. But to verify that, let's go to the first code to show positions. Okay, good. Let's see where are they. Okay, there you see position SPY, XLE, XLK. And you can see shares, cost basis. This is the strategy to rebalance my account. The next example is uh, this is a typical uh, mean reversion strategy. I call it the buy low and sell high. The strategy description is if today's close price is lower than yesterday's close price, I buy SPY using all my cash. Otherwise, sell off all positions. This is the strategy. So this is typically a daily reversion strategy and I just want to trade SPY and I need to calculate the price. So I need to request historical data to get yesterday's price and today's price. The trading decision made at spot time, which means I need to use schedule function to do it. I want to place market order. Let's see how simple the code is in average pi. Exactly same code to schedule something one minute before market close. And then the trading decision is crazily simple, which is request historical data. I just want two days. And uh, then the close price of yesterday is this one. The close price of today is this one. If close price is higher than yesterday, then I sell off all my positions. I use zero percentage. I use order target percentage. Otherwise, I buy all cash in. 1.0, which means 100% of my portfolio go to this contract. So this is a typical mean reversion strategy is very, very simple in average pi. The next example is a moving average crossover. The moving average crossover is if the fast moving average starts to jump higher than the slow moving average, we buy SPY using all cash. Otherwise, sell off all positions. You can go to this Wikipedia to understand this strategy more. And here is the, the the bar chart. Actually, the actually this is not the bar chart, but this is the uh, moving average calculation. The red line is the quick moving average. The blue line is the uh, the slow moving average. When they cross over, we think this is a trading opportunity. For example, this is a buy trading opportunity because fast moving average jumping higher than the slow moving average at this point. And then you can see the price go up and then this is the sell point. And the buy point, sell point. We want to trade based on moving average. So this is a typical trade, a trend strategy and daily trend strategy. Because I need to calculate the moving average, so I need to use historical data. Decisions are made at spot time, which is one minute before the market close, and I want to place market order. How can we do that? Still very simple in average pi. You just copy the code to schedule your function to run at one minute before the market close. And then you do something like this. First, retrieve historical data. I put dot history instead of request historical data because this is the syntax in Quantopian because average pi also supports Quantopian's code. So I can do that in average pi. So I got historical data go back to 80 days. 
not 80 days and maybe not enough, 100 days. Because I need to calculate the moving average of 90 and 30. This is the fast moving average value. Minus one means the latest fast moving average value. And this is the slow moving average because this is average by 90 days. And if the fast moving average is higher than the slow moving average, which means that this part in the chart, I want to buy 100% of my portfolio. Otherwise, I just want to sell all of my positions. This is the moving average, how you can make it happen in average pie, and then you can do the trading, either paper trading or live trading. Backtesting fundamentals. After you build your strategies in average pie, you can apply historical data on apply your historical data on your strategies and see how good the strategy is and compare the strategy with the predictory result to see how good it is. For example, in average pie, we can do back testing. Let's open testme.py. This is the main entrance of average pie testing platform. This is testme.py. Okay, the first thing you need to do is exactly the same as Romy.py. You need to choose which strategy you want to backtest. Here, I want to backtest the close price reversion, which is the buy low, sell high strategy. This is what I want to backtest. You need to give a account code because you need to fetch historical data from IB. So you need to give account code. Data provider name, you put IB because you want to get data there. Wrong mode, I want to test it. Wrong like quantopian mode. The, the next part is a little bit longer, but actually concept is very simple. You need to tell average pi what kind of historical data you need. In this strategy, you need one minute bar data because you need to do trade and average pi know, need to know the price to simulate the trade. Also because you request historical data of daily bar so that you need a daily bar chart and you need to go back 10 days or 30 days to calculate whatever number you want. And this is to prepare historical data. If you want, you can add more historical data if you need. Otherwise, just comment them out. The next part is what you need to define is the simulation end time and start time. When this one is auto, which means it will average pad will automatically create the simulation time and run it for you. If you want to run one minute, you just put one T there. So it will run four days ago until the current day. So let's run it. Okay, simulation started, end. Oh, okay, let's take a look. So first, data ingestion starts. Average pi ingested historical data of SPY, daily bar, 30 days. SPY, minute bar, go back 10 days. And then print out account information, and this one is the simulation number. And after initialize, the daily function is triggered. And you can see the simulation starts, actually start to buy SPY, and sell SPY there. This is the simulation. The simulation result is saved at a file at average pi folder called output. And the balance, this is the simulation result 
this is the account balance result. You can see we make money, $966. If you want to see the transaction details, it shows us bought 300 shares, sold 300 shares there. Then the next step is, what if I want to see the, the simulation result? What should I do? What you can do is go to a file called performance analysis chart. Actually, because the simulation result is pretty short on my demonstration, so I made a fake balance loss. It's just a TXT file, and I save it there. This is just a fake numbers, actually. I just want to, this is actually the balance, a fake balance log from the simulation result. And see if we run it, see how it goes. Actually, it makes chart, looks like this. Also, it calculates sharp ratio, annualized sharp ratio is 2.68. This is how you analyze your back testing results. If you want to add more statistics, you can simply add it there. You can see I calculate mean, I calculate standard deviation, and calculate annualized sharp ratio, and you can add whatever you want there to calculate your statistics. The next part is Average Pi is able to handle multiple accounts. It's a very useful feature for fund managers. Think about you want to rebalance account, but you have multiple accounts. In Average Pi is very simple. You just say, I want to place order to account one and I want to place this order to account number two, and then average pi will take care of it for you. In summary, average pi can help you set up your own algo trading platform, backtest and the live trade together, trade with different brokers, manage multiple accounts. Average pi is flexible and easy to use. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at ibridgepi at gmail.com. Actually, if you need help on coding, you can check out our well-known rent a coder service, which is ibridgepi slash rent a coder service. We will help you to code your strategy. You just spend your time on trading. We help on coding. Then don't forget to subscribe to YouTube channel and it's free and a lot of tutorials will come. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Liu. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation. Um, I'm sure our audience today got to know a lot about how they can use the iBridge by API. And uh, also the backtesting bit was covered, which was wonderful. So, uh, Dr. Liu, uh, the first question which we have is, um, are there predefined APIs for placing bracket orders? Yes. Actually, if you go to iBridgePy documentation, you will see a function called place order with uh, stop loss and uh, take profit. This is a predefined function you can use for the, right there. You can place order with stop loss, take profit, take profit and stop loss. The, in nature, they are bracket uh, orders actually. And if you need some other more advanced bracket orders, you can build it by yourself in average time. All right. Uh, one a major question which we're getting is the applicability of iBridge Pi throughout geographies. So uh, the main uh, you know countries which are covered is U.S., Canada, and um, U.S., Canada, and uh, India. So um, if I'm not wrong, Dr. Liu, I uh, just wanted to understand uh, iBridge Pi is uh, applicable in India through interactive brokers platform, right? Yes. Because uh, Interactive Broker is the leading broker and it provides many countries and India is one of them. And so for Indian 
traders, you can use average pi to trade the Indian markets with interactive broker. All right, and um, I think for U.S. markets, uh, you have very well uh, covered the TD Ameritrade and Robinhood and Interactive Brokers. All are applicable. Yes. Yes. Uh, one question that is also there is: uh, Is iBridge Pi uh, can can iBridge Pi be used for futures and options trading, or is it just for spot trading? Actually, you can trade any contracts are supported by Interactive Broker by a function called super symbol. Using this one, the super symbol takes variables to define more contract types. For example, stock, options, future, index, forex, and others. And here I give you an example how you can write it and stock, ETF, forex, index, futures, options, structured products. You can see this example, this is traded in Hong Kong exchange actually. And the, this one is a structured product, it's not stock. So that if you want to trade any, uh, any contracts other than stock, you need to use super symbol, it will make it happen. All right, uh, thank you so much. Uh, for another question, which we have. All right. Um, so, uh, can we add a condition that if the total loss of the strategy is 5,000, um, then stop further execution for that day uh, for 1x multiplier? So I think it's talking about the stop loss uh, and if the stop loss can be put in the code and can be executed through iBridge Pi. Yes, stop loss is, as I mentioned in the, uh, uh, the, the bracket order, you can place uh, order with a stop loss order actually. If you have a special algorithm, you can build it by yourself in iBridge Pi. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Liu. Uh, it was it was a wonderful uh, experience to have uh, a session with you, and uh, uh, I hope I hope you also had a great time. Um, uh, you know, I think it's showing our audience about Ibridge Pi. Thank you very much. Actually, thank you for your team to make it happen, and it's my pleasure to talk about Ibridge Pi for 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 the audience. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh,